I discover something called the slap chop method, which is a popular way of painting Warhammer. I discovered it recently on YouTube and I thought I'd give it a go. So I bought myself some new Warhammer models, uh, and some new paints from the Army Painter, the Contrast Collection, and I thought I'd give it a go. So I'll go ahead and drill a hole in my guy to fix him securely using blue tack and a toothpick to a can of coke so I can spray him down pretty well. Then I head over and I hit the figure with Celestra Grey and then I, uh, I dry brush that on and then I go over the whole thing again with less vigour with Corax White. Uh, this is what I've learned and the idea is to the, the deeper recesses of the model stay quite dark. Uh, the mid-tones of the model are um, illuminated rather are illuminated by the grey and then the peaks of the model, the highest points of the model are left quite bright as you can see um, for the contrast paints to do their jobs. Uh, we hit the orc with orc skin obviously and we cover all his skin as best as I can without making any mistakes. Um, that's one thing that I've learned over the period of making this video is Contrast paints can be very unforgiving. If you make a mistake, you know, if I'm painting his skin and I hit his belt or his shirt or, you know, his trousers or whatever, um, even though you put another coat of contrast over the top, you can still see it underneath. So as careful as I can, I hit the green skin uh, with the orc skin and then I go ahead and I hit the trousers and the leather belts and straps on my orc guy with snakebite leather. Uh, I do use Army Painter speed paints. I do have a collection, a small collection of contrast paints from Citadel or Games Workshop, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I've also got base paints as well from Games Workshop. So I do everything brown with the snakebite leather. Uh, again, trying not to hit anything, especially the boots and his belt. I did make some tiny mistakes while doing this, but you can't really see it. Um, and one of the big things I learned while I was doing this, making this video, is uh, the use of brushes. Now, as you can see, I was doing this with the fine detail brush and I quickly realized that actually I probably should be using a, a bigger brush. I mean, it sounds pretty sensible and obvious, retrospectively speaking, uh, but at the time I just was trying to be as careful as I possibly could be. Uh, I didn't really want to make any mistakes. So I think next time I do one of these models, I will use bigger brushes, uh, the appropriate size brush for the appropriate job, right? Uh, anyway, we go ahead and we hit the boots with Gravelord Grey. Uh, the speed paint from Army Painter. Um, I take up the that colour on all the metal as well. Again, going as careful as I can. And towards the end of the video, you'll see that I was in two minds of what to do with certain parts of this model. Another thing that I learned while making this video is, for me anyway, I do need to come up with a, a paint, or a colour plan. I didn't really have a, you know, a big idea of what I was going to paint this guy, how I was going to paint him, how he was going to look. I just sort of winged it, made it up as I went along. I mean, it turned out really, really well, in my opinion. I think it looks really good. And you'll see what it looks like as we get to the end of the video. But yeah, I think next time I do this, I'm definitely going to need to um, pre-plan the, the colours I'm going to use because I did change my mind a couple of times on a couple of things. Uh, one or two things didn't quite go to plan. I made a mistake on the um, the shoulder aspect of this guy. Um, it's I thought it was bone. It's clearly metal. The, the skull and the spine there. It's clearly metal, but I just went for a bone look and I was real, realised afterwards that actually that doesn't look right at all. So I did have to change a couple of things. So yeah, we just um, snake bite leather on all the brown and gravel or grey on all the metal. And I did, I thought the, the cloak that he um, is wearing, I, I, I tried a few things on that as well. I wanted to make it look like, you know, dirty fluff or dirty feathers. So I went in there with a couple of different types of contrast just to try and get the desired effect. It turned out all right in the end. I'm not entirely sure if I would have done it any differently if I'm honest because um, the end product I'm very very happy with but um, yeah I just hit that with some highlights afterwards. So yeah we're just finishing up with the gun. So I hit that metal with Corax white. I wanted to give it a bone colour but quickly realised that wasn't going to work like I said. Uh, so I do come back to that afterwards but I hit the, the skulls in between his legs with Corax white. I do darken that up a little bit later on. Uh, and highlight it again afterwards. Again, the spikes on his wrists, hit that with the black. I used I used Slaughter Red inside his mouth and on his lips, and I did use Skeleton Horde on his teeth. I wanted my attention to detail to be uh, at a very high level, so I just go back and touch up a few things that I realised that I'd missed, such as one finger, uh, his trigger finger, incidentally. Yeah, so here we are. We I, I realised I'd made a mistake on, on the, 
the uh, the steel or the metal on his on his back and on his shoulder so I hit that with Aragos dunes just to try and dark, darken it up a bit hitting those teeth and nails with skeleton horde try and darken that up a bit um and I did want to darken up the lips they, they were a little bit bright so I do go back to that afterwards just making sure there's a bit more detail on a few things before I move on I, I wanted this figure to be as detailed and as comprehensive as I could make it uh, by no means is this you know as good as many other people that I've seen online especially Instagram and YouTube I've looked at so many videos on YouTube over the last couple of weeks and some of the paint is absolutely incredible yeah as I said I changed my mind on a couple of things I hit the metal again with Runefang steel just to give it a little extra pop I think it it just blended in a little bit too much and I just wanted to give it a little bit of I wanted to make it stand out just a little bit more and while I was painting these claws I had an idea about what to do with the sections of metal such as the plaque that he's carrying on his back and the sections on the claw the the pneumatic claw um i wanted to give it like a, a reclaimed metal look uh, these orcs are rather uh, messy so they kind of construct stuff out of things that they find and i wanted to give it like a dirty red yellow color so i go over the metal with slaughter red but i wanted to keep it quite dark and dirty and they also use a bit of zealot yellow on there as well just to give it like that you know, they've picked up scraps of metal to construct the claw and that steel emblem that he's carrying with him. Um, so I darken that up as much as I can and I go for a little bit of, you know, different tones, different colours on the claw. Just to try and keep it as interesting as possible. I didn't want this to be boring. I didn't want it to be run of the mill. I wanted it to be my style. Since getting back into it, I wanted to start recording some videos so you'll hear me waffle a little bit. So, so you'll have to forgive these. The, the way I do these videos, I'm not the best YouTube uh, content creator. I don't have all the fancy cameras and microphones and the post-production uh, is probably not the best, but hey, if you learn something from this video, if you learn something from the techniques that I'm using, then brilliant, I've done my job. So I'm just going back and highlighting this this fur, I don't know what you would call it, coat, coverall, just hitting it with some white, trying to give it that dirty, feathered, you know, mucky look, as if it's been dragged through the mud a couple of times. There's a little bit of green in there as well. I think it looks really good. Um, the effect I wanted, I got the effect that I wanted. Probably would I have done it better? Maybe I'd do it better next time, but the effect is perfect. So I just go in and highlight the teeth with Corax White. Uh, make sure I get some of that front plumage highlighted as well. Yeah, here we go. I go back and just decided to do this thing grey. Um, and I highlight it afterwards, dry brush it with some silver just to give it that metal look. I, I all the way through painting this, just wasn't happy with the way that that skull and spine was looking. So I thought, let's just decomplicate this, make it a little bit more simple. Just hit it with black and dry brush it afterwards. It, it makes more sense. At this point, I realised that I can start using bigger brushes. <laughs> I should have done it in the beginning. But um, yeah, going into making this video, I was a little bit nervous, apprehensive of recording this. And, and I'll be honest, you know, making a right pig's ear out of it. But it turned out all right. But after doing this one, I think I've got the confidence just to go in and start using bigger brushes next time. So coming towards the end of painting this, and I just wanted to hit some highlights. Um, blacken up the holes in his jeans. As I say, I did make a couple of mistakes while doing this. Uh, that first highlight and that skull there, you just saw the, the one on the right, a little bit too much highlight in there, but it's not too bad. You know, it's not the end of the world. I'm not too critical about how these models look per se. I, I, you know, they are what they are. And my skill set is my skill set. So I'm just going in and highlighting a couple of little bits and pieces around the figure just to try and give it that extra little zest. But the point in this is just to have fun. I find this really therapeutic. I find it a great way to stay calm and, you know, find a place of zen. <laughs> it's a, it might sound silly, but I find it really relaxing. So I just wanted to spend a little bit of extra time just making sure I'm happy with it, giving it that look that I want. Um, so just finishing off the model, I'm hitting the highlights, just hitting the threads with black, just distinguishing those, making them a little bit different than the trousers on the boots, on the back of the trousers there, a couple of little highlights. Yeah, being really careful not to make an absolute hash of this at this point. The claw looks exactly how I pictured it now. It's uh, I darkened it up with some snake bite leather over the top of that. This bit, I wasn't. I did it and then I was like, ah, probably shouldn't have done that. That line at the front, I don't know why I did that. I just saw the line, I was like, oh, I got black in my hand, I'll just put a little line in there. <laughs> it doesn't ruin it. I mean, it doesn't really do it any favours, but it certainly doesn't ruin the model. It still looks fine. And then just to finish off, we're uh, highlighting these cuts on his chest with the red. And then we just finish up with some dry brush on the metal, just to give that extra little pop. And I just fly around the model, highlighting some other little bits, 
the screws, the bolts, the rivets, just to give it that little extra finish. Highlighting the scratches, the cuts in the metal, just bringing it out a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this. The, the slap chop method works really well for the style that I wanted to achieve on this particular model. And I'll be honest, I think it's the style that I'm going to adopt going forward. Uh, it's relatively simple. I probably could reproduce this model within maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes next time if I was going to do it again. But there we go. It's all done. I'm really happy with that. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's exactly what I was looking for. The, the, the you know, the used metal, the yellow and the red just looks great. I'm really happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with the way it panned out. One thing I did forget is uh, to highlight his eyes. So just pop a little yellow in his eyes. I wanted to give him a bit of a, you know, not a natural look. I didn't want to do just black eyes. I do like the look of yellow eyes, especially on these orcs. I've got some of the older models. These are um, the newer models. I'll have to research and find out like when the when the models actually change because the older ones are a little bit smaller and they do have a lot less detail. You know, you have to divine a lot of the markings with the paint, with the actual brush. Um, so yeah, this this new style of, of models that they've got is absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, and I did do a little test with some with some skin, um, which I forgot about, which I just quickly covered up there just to hide it. <laughs> but there we are. Thanks for watching this video. Um, really enjoyed painting this model. I learned a hell of a lot from it. Hopefully you learned something from it too. Uh, let me know if you use the slap chop method. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to do from now on. It's pretty quick, pretty simple, and I hope you like the video. If you did, leave me a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you want more, if you're interested in watching a bit more of uh, my painting. Um, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.